All right, anatomy students, we're back here going over the skeletal system. So today we're going to talk about bone formation and uh, the layout of bone tissue. So uh, shouldn't be too long, but about a 12-minute video, uh, which will cover roughly one period worth of lecture material. So let's go ahead and get her started. All right, welcome to Skeletal System Video Lesson 2. Today we're going to talk about um, bone structure and uh, bone growth. So first we need to talk about um, what I call and the handout that you will receive or you already have received is the anatomy of the long bone. So the humerus is a typical long bone. Bones are classified by their shape. There's also flat bones, uh, irregular bones, sesamoid bones, and short bones. So a flat bone clearly is one that is very thin and uh, is uh, usually much wider than it is thick from front to back. Short bones have more of a cube shape. They're about the same width as they are long and as deep. Irregular bones are just, they have a very uh, odd uh, shape. You can see here this vertebrae, it has a body and has the processes that uh, that come off. But right now we're going to focus on the long bone, okay? Uh, and there are some key features to the long bone that we need to discuss. First, we need to talk about the section of the long bone called the diaphysis. This is the shaft or the middle part of the bone. And we can see in this diagram that the diaphysis goes from about here down to about this region. That is the middle section of the bone. The ends of the bone are referred to as the epiphyses. Now, of course, because uh, there are two ends, you have the end that is closest to the attachment to the body, which if we remember our directional terms from the first unit, that would be the proximal epiphysis, which would be this end of the bone. And again, proximal meaning in proximity or closest to the attachment of the body. And the other end would be the distal epiphysis, and that is furthest away, more distant uh, from the attachment to the body. And then there's the area that connects the uh, diaphysis to the epiphyses, and that would be the metaphyses. And the plural is metaphyses and singular is metaphysis. That's why they're spelled differently. So this would be technically the proximal metaphysis, and that would be the distal metaphysis. In adolescence, through the end of active growth, the epiphyses of the long bone contain hyaline cartilage in the form of what is called the epiphyseal growth plate, or sometimes just referred to as a growth plate. And if you've ever been uh, around the medical industry and you have an x-ray, um, they will uh, look at the x-ray and say, oh, if, if the individual is still growing, they will say, oh, you're still growing because your growth plates are open. Now, uh, open meaning that that plate is still cartilaginous and has not fully formed into bone. Um, because cartilage is a soft tissue, it doesn't show up on an x-ray. So if we look at this x-ray here, it, it appears that there is a gap right here and that this end of the bone is actually separate from this part of the bone. And it's technically not two separate pieces, but because the growth plate is made of hyaline cartilage in through here, uh, then that appears on x-ray to be open, quote unquote, open or separate. And that's what they mean. So when you look at that x-ray, um, it, it appears that the end of that bone is separate from the metaphysis of the bone. And it's technically not. Again, it's just that the cartilage doesn't show up on the x-ray. The growth plate is always actively dividing and causing the bone to elongate from each end. And this is how we get taller as we grow until we reach puberty. And then that slows down and you pretty much are finished growing at that point. 
In adults, the epiphyseal cartilage is no longer present and elongation of bone has stopped. That individual is no longer growing, growing taller at least. The epiphyseal plate becomes the epiphyseal line as growing cartilage is replaced by calcified bone. So in an adult, an x-ray on an adult, this line that would be open on an x-ray in an adolescent, in an adult, uh, it is closed, and that is a clear indication that that person is no longer growing. The epiphyseal line is visible externally and on x-rays. Compact bone contains units called osteons, or sometimes referred to as the haversian system, formed by concentric lamellae or rings of calcified matrix. So as we look at this diagram, this, this area here is all compact bone. And in this area, we see one, we see two, we see three, four, there's another one, five, one back here, one back there. Those are all uh, a haversian system or a canal system, also referred to as one osteon. And in that osteon, you will see these concentric rings that kind of resemble tree rings around that osteon. And in the central canal, you will find the blood vessels and the nerves as they run through that canal system. Uh, the interstitial lamellae between the osteons are left over fragments of older osteons. So what does that mean? All right. So if you stack a bunch of firewood, if you've ever stacked firewood that is unsplit, you know that there are spaces in between those round logs. Well, since we talked about the tree ring analogy, if we can imagine uh, this is stacked firewood, you'll notice there are no open spaces in between. That is because older osteons that would be in between these osteons have been placed in there and are used to fill in those gaps uh, where those round osteons would fit together, aka those round logs of firewood. And that's what the interstitial lamellae is indicating, that they fill in the gap in between those round osteons. The lacunae are small spaces between the lamellae, which house osteocytes. Okay, an osteocyte, if you remember, anytime we see the uh, root word site, that is cell. And of course, osteo means bone. So this is a mature bone cell. So as we look, we zoom in here. What we are looking at in this diagram is we're looking at that little spot right there on the bone. And we've zoomed way in on it. And this is a mature bone cell or an osteocyte. The space that it lives in inside that calcified bony matrix is called the lacunae. So that's the little open area or the small room, if you will, that the bone cell lives in. And then, so that bone cell can reach out and talk to and connect at other cells. There are tiny canals that run from the lacunae and go and connect to other lacunae where other osteocytes will be. And all of the canals that those extensions of the cytoplasm, I don't know why those extra lines are kicking out there but where those canals that these cellular extensions live in or use to get there are called the canaliculi. Uh, they are small channels filled with extracellular fluid connecting the lacunae. So the little tunnels or the canals that connect each of those lacunae are called the canaliculi. Blood and lymphatic vessels are found in the osteons. Um, as I said before, each osteon has a central open canal, sometimes called the central canal and or haversian canal. And that's where your blood vessels will run through the bone. That's how they get uh, all the way through the bone. The 
perforating or Volkmann's canal allow transit of these vessels to the outer cortex of the bone. And you can see uh, there's one right here. So that allows the blood supply to get to the outside layer, uh, which of course we remember is referred to as the periosteum, the outer covering. So that's how blood gets in uh, to the bone through the Volkmann's canals and out of the bone as well. Spongy bone lacks osteons because it uh, has a lot of more open space. Instead, the lamellae are arranged in a lattice of thin columns called the trabiculae. So as we look at this section of uh, spongy bone, uh, this is all open area, it's open space. And the structural support of the spongy bone, which would be this arm, this arm, and that arm, all of those individual arms are referred to as trabiculae. The trabiculae of spongy bones support and protect the red bone marrow and are oriented along lines of stress. A little bit of trivia for you right here. Um, this type of bone, spongy bone, is so light and strong that a very famous French architect used the uh, microscopic view of spongy bone of the human femur was his inspiration to create a very famous piece of architecture in Paris, France called the Eiffel Tower. Uh, that man happened to be named Eiffel. And that's why it's called the Eiffel Tower. So there's a little trivia for if you're on Jeopardy and you know, you're asked where the inspiration for the structural support of the Eiffel Tower came from, you can answer, uh, what is the human femur, Alex? Anyway, inside that spongy bone is where you're going to find the red marrow. And of course, this is where uh, blood cell production, red blood cell production is going to take place. And that term is hematotopoiesis. Within each trabiculae of spongy bone, there are lacunae or spaces where osteocytes are found. As in compact bone, the lacunae contain osteocytes that nourish the mature bone tissue from the blood circulating through the trabiculae. And remember, trabiculae are these support structures here, here, and here. And if you were to look inside, you wouldn't see the osteon or the canal, uh, the big central canal, but you would see um, the bone tissue. Here's your lacunae and lacunae and all these little skinny lines that connect each of those osteocytes housed in each lacunae, again, are the canaliculi. So the same basic uh, cellular structure support system is the same, whether you're in spongy bone or whether or you're in uh, compact bone. It's just that the spongy bone lacks that central or haversian canal system. The interior of long bones is made up primarily of spongy bone. Uh, the use of spongy bone lessens overall bone weight. So here's a cross-section look at the femur. This is what I'm talking about. Under microscopic view, this is what uh, the French architect Eiffel used to inspire him to develop the structural support for the Eiffel Tower, named after him. So you can see that here in the epiphysis, to keep our bones lighter, uh, we have spongy bone. Now you can see the spongy bone stops. We have this very large open area right here. That's the medullary cavity. That's where the yellow marrow is gonna be, but red marrow is gonna be all packed in this open area of the spongy bone. And that is where we're going to have red cell production, red blood cell production. All right, okay, that is going to take care of all the material we need to cover today. All right, that'll wrap it up for video lesson two. Um, so if you have any questions, shoot me an email, let me know. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.